and welcome to the screencast lesson for quiz number three. Just a reminder, quiz number three, I can ask you any of the birds from the beginning of the semester. So quiz, any of the birds from quiz one, quiz two, quiz three um, are all fair game for quiz three. But I'm just going to go through the newest eight birds that we're adding for quiz number three. So starting off with the mallard. This is our first duck. Um, the mallard is a very familiar duck. I'm sure you've all seen it. Very easy to identify. It's really a pretty spectacular looking bird, although many of us um, sort of dismiss it because it's so common. Uh, but the males, uh, male ducks, by the way, are called drakes. The males have a green iridescent head. They have a white collar. Uh, and also when they fly, let's scroll down here a little bit, they have a blue patch on their wing. Um, and you can actually see that, look at the female here. The females are um, very camouflaged, very just brown and white with a little eye line. But you can see that little blue patch peeking out there um, from the wing. Um, so uh, again, I will only ask you the male in breeding plumage. Notice in this one you can see the orange feet. The orange feet um, is actually part of the male uh, breeding plumage as well. They get very bright um, during the summer. Okay, so um, that is bird number one. You do not need to know that by sound, although probably many of you do because it like, sounds like the most common ducks that you, you know, the, the duck sound you think of. Um, the next bird is the morning dove. This is a bird you do need to know by sound. I think there's only two this week that we are adding um, by sound. The morning dove is one of them. And it was a bird that I remember hearing as a child and I thought it was some kind of owl. Uh, and we'll talk about why when we, when we listen to it. Um, so the Morning dove is a dove. Um, doves tend to be a little bit thicker bodied, sort of round in the body. Small head, uh, has a little eye ring on the head. They have an iridescent sheen to them. You don't necessarily think of that, but if you, when you look at a morning dove with a pair of binoculars, um, you'll start to see some, some sort of rainbowy colors. Oh, that's an Incan dove there, sorry but some sort of rainbowy colors that will emerge um, on its feathers, much like pigeons. Um, you know, pigeons have a, a little iridescence on their feathers as well. So the morning dove, um, when they fly, notice when they sit, see how pointed that tail is. They have kind of a long tail. When they sit, it's very pointed. So, um, you know, I'll often see these on telephone wires, uh, and you can notice them by their shape pretty easily. Um, let me just see... They also have a, their tail is rather large when they fly. I'm not seeing a good picture of it in flight here. Um, I don't think though you're gonna have any trouble confusing it with any of the other birds that we are going to learn. Um, sort of a tannish bird with some nice distinctive markings, um, no collar. That's good to know because there are some other things that are similar that have collars, so no collar on it. Uh, and the call, I think, is going to sound familiar to you. I don't actually know. Um, you know, usually there's a kind of a word or phrase that helps us remember it. I don't actually know of one for this bird, um, but I think you'll 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 find it familiar. Here it is. Okay, so that's the morning dove. So let's move on to bird number three, and that is the yellow-bellied sapsucker. This is, um, you know, that's a good insult to throw at someone. Yellow-bellied sapsucker. Okay, so, oh, sorry. This is one of our woodpeckers, and it's called a sapsucker because it actually does um, 
draw sap from a tree. And it does that by drilling little holes. You know, see those holes? Um, I was doing you know, cross country skiing the other day in the woods and, you know, saw a tree that had a lot of lines in the hole, a lot of lines of sap sucker holes. Um, if you're a sap sucker and you want the sweetest sap out there, that's the maple tree, right? So sugar maples tend to have a lot of sap sucker holes in them. Um, so that's something to start looking for when you're out in the woods. So sap suckers um, have the general woodpecker colorization. So woodpeckers tend to have three colors and maybe a fourth. So they tend to be black and white with a little bit of red and sometimes a little yellow. Um, and so, you know, yellow-bellied sapsucker, you'd expect to have some kind of bright yellow belly, and it's really just a yellow wash. Um, it's yellowy. Um, one of the ways you can tell a yellow-bellied sapsucker, though, is, is this red throat. So unlike like the downy woodpecker or the hairy woodpecker, which have a little red up here on their head, sapsucker also has red down here underneath. Um, and I've mentioned this before, but woodpeckers sit upright on a tree. So you can tell by the position of a bird, whether it's a woodpecker or not. Um, this, you know, kind of propping their tail against the, the base of the tree. So here's some good um, pictures of the sapsucker. Now I said, look for the red on the throat. Notice the female doesn't have the red on the throat. Um, Again, I won't quiz you on that, but it's good to know when we start to try to have to distinguish this bird from a downy woodpecker and a hairy woodpecker. Um, so look for the red on the throat, um, a distinctive black eye line, and a little bit of yellow wash to the chest. The back is very spotted, very um, small, many, many spots. I can't... Uh, this is probably the best picture that we're going to see here. Um, just lots and lots of little little spots, and, and their belly is even sort of streaked. Okay, and you do not need to know that one by call, but I will say that yellow-bellied sapsuckers are known for their drumming. So, you know, woodpeckers all drum on wood. Well, many of them use that drumming as a way to mark territory, and sapsuckers try to make the loudest sound they can possibly make. So you will often see them pecking on metal, like cars or propane tanks, anything that's got a good resonance, they will just pound and pound on um, and make a, try to make as much noise as possible to declare their territories. Um, okay, so moving on to the next bird, which is a ruby-throated hummingbird. So the hummingbird, this is the only hummingbird we have here. Uh, there are occasions where other things get blown in off course, but as far as the actual common breeding range, the ruby-throated hummingbird is the hummingbird that you're going to see. So when, if you go to Arizona, there's tons of different kinds of hummingbirds. Here in Vermont, it's the ruby-throated. Um, so pretty easy to identify, right? Because it has a distinctive hummingbird shape that I think all of you are going to be familiar with. Very pointed wings, very small, very long, thin, excuse me, very long, thin beak. And the males, of course, have this red throat. Be a little bit cautious on that because this red is, is really iridescent. And if you see it in, you know, on a cloudy day, it might look completely black under there. Um, and that's just the way the light is coming off of those feathers. So it really takes um, sort of a, a reflection of some sunlight to get it to see that really red color. So um, the males are green, green head, and a very bright red throat. Now the females are much the same green, but just a white throat, nothing um, uh, so you again though if you see a, if you see a hummingbird in Vermont, um, I don't know ninety eight percent of the time, ninety nine percent of the time, maybe even ninety nine point five percent of the time, it's going to be a ruby throated hummingbird. 
Okay, moving on to our next bird. You don't need to know hummingbird by sound, by the way. Um, we're going to do a Baltimore Oriole. This is a really gorgeous bird. And I think probably most of you are familiar with them because, you know, they're the mascot of a baseball team and all of that. Um, very bright orange bird with a black head and some white stripes on the wing. This is in the blackbird family. So if you, if you think about, say, a red-winged blackbird, those of you who know what that is, notice the shape is very similar. Um, and they're going to have similar, some other similarities as well. Um, think about the grackle that we learned. Um, there's some similarities with that as well. So I don't think we're going to confuse this. There aren't a lot of orange birds. Um, certainly nothing that we're going to see that's going to have the kind of orange uh, on the breast that the male oriole has. The females are more yellowy. So if you saw about the same color pattern, but let me see. Let's get a picture of a female in here. So here's a female. Um, and notice that the beak is rather pointed. That's kind of a typical blackbird characteristic, kind of a, uh, a sharp pointed beak. And they do like fruit. And a lot of people put out fruit or grape jelly uh, in the summertime. I wouldn't try they're, they're not around in the winter, so not worth doing that in the wintertime. Okay. Next bird. You do not need to know the oriole by sound. Okay, we're going to look at another woodpecker called the downy woodpecker. This is a very small woodpecker. It does come to feeders a lot. So those of you who um, have feeders near trees, you might get a, a downy coming to your feeder. They are um, quite small. And what's very important about the downy is the length of the beak. I wish I had a slightly bigger image here, but the, notice the length of the beak from, from where it attaches to the head to the end of the beak. It's less than half of the width across its head. <laughs> that seems kind of obscure, but when we try to distinguish between the hairy woodpecker, which we'll have to do um, in future weeks, that beak is longer than that. So less than half the width of its head uh, on the beak. It's a little bit smaller. It does have the black and white stripes um, on the wing, but it also kind of has a solid, you can see it here in this one, a solid white on the back. Now the difference between the male and female, the males have a little red spot on the head and the females don't. Um, notice how just kind of... Um, <laughs> I just want to say cute and fluffy. That's what comes to mind uh, when I think of a downy woodpecker. We don't need to know the song of the downy woodpecker, or, um, but I'm going to play it for you because you might want to learn it anyway. Um, downies have a descending, it's called a whinny, like a, a horse whinny. It has a descending whinny, so it sounds a little bit like a, a horse, <laughs> and the, the sound sort of um, slows down and, and descends. So I think of downy descending. Here's a here it is. So I shouldn't have said it, it slows down. It actually speeds up, but it descends. They also make that little pick, pick, pick sound. Um, but that's sort of slightly more advanced birding that we're not going to get to. Okay, Eastern Phoebe. You know, some of you have mentioned this bird already, so I think it's some that, uh, one that some of you are familiar with. It's a bird that hangs out around people. It likes to nest on the underside of overhangs. So a lot of us, in the way we build our houses, we have overhangs like a garage roof or something like that. And so you'll, this is the one you'll see nesting on top of, say, a garage light or a rafter because they like to be underneath a, a little overhang, which seems great. They get a little protection for their, their young. Okay, so Phoebe's fall into the fly catcher family, and that probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you yet, um, but fly catchers have very wide beaks. They catch insects on the wing, so they, 
fly out and chase insects that are flying by. Um, and, the, and they tend to be a pretty drab coloration. No bright colors here. The Phoebe, though, is a fairly dark flycatcher. It's almost black, sort of a dark gray-brown. And they have a very wide head. Um, one of the things that helps you identify a Phoebe is when it sits, okay, it's sitting on a branch, it bobs its tail up and down and up and down and up and down. So look for the tail bob. Of course, you won't see that on the quiz, so um, you'll, that's just for your memory. So Phoebe has a distinctive flycatcher shape, which probably looks to you just like a bird, um, but it does have a wide, see how big the head is in comparison with the body, and a dark, wide bill. I will ask you this one by sound, and they say their name. They say, and it, it's sort of raspy, so they say, Phoebe, Phoebe. So you could actually hear in that one that they sometimes say, Phoebe, 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 Phoebe. All right, and our very last bird is a European starling. European starlings are not native to North America. They're from Europe, thus the name European starling. Um, they are, notice the iridescence, and you may be able to guess what this bird might be related to, okay? So you think about the other um, birds that we've seen that are black with iridescence. It's a blackbird. Um, it can vary a lot. If you see this in the sunshine, it's going to look purple and green and black and blue uh, and be very colorful. If you, most of the time when you see it, it's going to look kind of black. And when they first get their feathers and their feathers are fresh, they're very spotted. So look at this one right here. Um, so in the winter time, the feathers are fresh. It's got the spots, and those spots actually wear off. Um, white feathers are, um, decay, break down faster than black feathers. So the spots have to wear off. So by the time it's ready for breeding plumage, it's uh, a bright, shiny iridescence like this. Um, it has a fairly good sized beak, dark eye, so that's going to distinguish it from the grackle. Notice how short the tail is, too. Really stubby tail. Okay, when it's flying, it looks, uh, you can just really tell. Let me see if there's a picture of, of it in flight. Uh, nope. <laughs> uh, but it has a, it, you can really pick out that stubby, it's a stubby bird. Uh, and that's going to distinguish it from the other blackbirds that we have. And you do not need to know this by sound. So that is the end of our birds for quiz 